Welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we're on a bit of a mission creep. Uh, in a previous video, I looked at the operation of this current clamp, the HT4006 from HT Italia, to see how it operated on DC milliamps, so it switched to the DC 40 amp range there. Wasn't too successful with doing that. Uh, we had problems with zeroing it to start with, and then we had a, a lot of instability in the readings until we got up to around about 750 milliamps. Then things started to even out on the three instruments and you had a bit better performance, but low milliamps, it seemed to struggle to do it. However, I do have this from Fluke, which is the i30. Uh, now this is a zero to 20 amps DC clamp adapter. Um, and in comparison to the HT4006, I don't know how well we'll be able to see that. Um, on the 40 amp range, we are 10 millivolts per amp, whereas this one will be 100 millivolts per amp. So that may put us in slightly better stead with regards to reading low DC milliamps. Um, for the rest of the specs on this, uh, AC amps, it will read 0 to 30, has a 1 milliamps resolution. However, it's only specified to measure down to 5 milliamps and it has plus or minus 1% plus 2 milliamps. In comparison, our HT4006 that had a 10 milliamp resolution, but it was specified to read down to 100 milliamps. And as I said, it was 10 millivolts per amp and it had a plus or minus 2.5% accuracy specified for that one. So we'll switch him on and we'll see if we can go through our zeroing. So for this one here, you actually have to press in this button to, to get it to operate. Um, and it is proving a little bit finicky. Let's see, we've gone the opposite way now. Yeah, we might have to cut most of this out. Uh, oh, no, that's not too bad, is it? So we're just below the uh, zero point. There we go. So that's the meter zeroed, as good as I can get it. Let's just make sure there's no difference when we put it around the wire. Uh, which is interesting. Why have you got a difference there? Let's see if we can get it a little bit better. There we go. So that's zeroed actually around the wire that I'm going to put the current through. So we can go straight to... I'm going to do this test in exactly the same manner as I did with the HT4006, i.e. all three instruments running in parallel together. I'm going to use the same test points and what I'll do is take all the readings at the same point in time from the video that I capture and then put that into a table at the end so we can see how well it's done. So we'll switch him on and that should be 100 milliamps. Uh, so we've got pretty... No, oh, uh, so there is kind of a response from the Neptune. Uh, so we've got 99.3 for that. Um, smack on 100 milliamps for that one. So yeah, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's just on the uh, band there, aren't we? Let's go to 250 milliamps and see where we get. So now we've got good reading on our Neptune. Uh, good readings on all of these, isn't it? That's good. Uh, 475 milliamps. 477, 476, 480. Um, all looking good at the moment. 600 milliamps there. Uh, again, yes. On the cusp of it there, 599, 600. Uh, creeping up a little bit. So it is a little bit unsteady, but it doesn't seem too bad. Uh, we are 725 now. 
720. Yeah, this one does lack the milliamp resolution, so you would expect it to oscillate between uh, 720, 730. We can go with that. Uh, 1000 uh, milliamps. And then we've got 999, 998, 97. Smack on ramp for, for that one. I would say that's all looking pretty good. Uh, dropping back down to 100 milliamp. See how we get. So again, we've lost it on the Neptune there, but we've got 90. 7, 93, it is oscillating a bit on this, a bit more steady on the metro hit, but 96, 97, 98. Uh, so let's, uh, let's go down to 50 milliamps. Obviously the Neptune's going to be out of this, but it'll be interesting to see how these ones cope with it. 49, 46, um, 25 milliamps. Uh, 21 is 22, starting to creep out a little bit now, isn't it? 22 is consistently. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, yeah, we've lost it off of the instruments really, haven't we? 10 milliamps. Yeah, 10 milliamps. We've got, uh, I think it's 5 milliamps. So not so good. I guess sort of like the uh, 20 milliamps is probably going to get reasonably accurate with it. Yeah, we'll have to see what the results come back like. Perhaps 20 milliamps is about as low as it will get. So only, uh, let's just switch off and we'll just see how it returns to zero. Uh, that's interesting. So the zero has shifted a little bit. We're down to minus four, creeping back up. Yeah, perhaps a little bit of shift in the zero there as things start to get used. But on the whole, it seemed to be quite a bit better performance than the HT4006, so what we'll do is I'll tabulate those results up and then we can have a comparison. Here we go with the results table, uh, same format as before. You can see we've got the current injected over on the left hand side. The top six ones are the same readings as I did on the HT4006. And then at the bottom there I've added the sub 100 milliamp readings that I did extra when I was using the Fluke i30. Uh, but if we go back up to the top six you can see the only one that is out of specification is that initial 100 milliamp reading using the Neptune. Um, everything else on the Neptune is in pretty good order and not too bad at all. Going, moving over to the right hand side on the U1282A and the Metrohit coil we can see that they, all of the readings are well within tolerance and there's no real major deviations that you can see there. And a little bit lower on the sub 100 milliamp readings, obviously the Neptune didn't respond to any of them so that's all greyed out. On the U1282A there, the first two failed. The second two were just within spec, but they are very much at the bottom end of the tolerance band, really, uh, with the Metrohit coil. Now, they are all within spec, but again, all the readings are very much towards the bottom end of the tolerance band. So, whilst it does appear to be just about capable of it, I don't think I would use the i30 for sub 100 milliamp readings. I'd try and keep it above the 100 milliamp uh, and use something else different for measuring uh, lower current values than that. As before, below the table you've got the accuracy specifications for each of the devices, so the accuracy for the Fluke i30 plus or minus 1% plus 2 milliamps is added 
to each one of those tolerances for the individual instruments. And then we've got our overall accuracy table for each of the test values. I can put the plot up for that and you can see that it's quite distorted really because of that minus 100% reading for the Neptune instrument there. Um, everything else is sitting there pretty much bouncing along the 0% line totally within tolerance. Um, so the graph doesn't tell you that much on this occasion really. Uh, a couple of comparison graphs we can look at. Um, I've compared it in a couple of ways. first one is a DC milliamp. first one is averaging out the readings by the multimeter used. So you see them on the left there, the Neptune u 128 a and the Metrohit coil on the y-axis. And then for each of the current clamps you can see the average value for them which for the I-30 there, the readings for the metric hit coil and the u 128 a they're hovering around about 0.1%, so they just don't show on this graph. For the Neptune, you can see that it's the least accurate of the instruments, with 38% for the HT4006 and 16% when using it with the I-30. Uh, the other way of showing a comparison is by each individual test current applied. So the blue bars on this graph represent the HT4006 and the orange bars represent the I30. The current applied is on the y-axis and then you've got the tolerance along the x-axis. And again you can see the vast majority of times the I30 just doesn't appear on the plot. It does appear for it on the 100 milliamp reading. That's because of the value seen on the Neptune. And then again you see it for the 475 milliamp reading as well. Slightly showing a reading there, but it's still only 0.5%. So you can see there that the i30 has a much better performance than the HT4006. We're trying to read some DC milliamps. So that's all the results there. You can see we do get a much better performance from the i30 here with all three of these instruments in comparison to using the HT4006 when trying to measure DC milliamp readings. Um, however, this obviously does come at a price. Uh, this fluke here, looking around for prices, uh, recommended retail price looks to be around about £590, including UK VAT. I did manage to pick it up slightly cheaper for £515 from one of the instrument suppliers uh, dotted around the UK. In comparison, the HT4006, that's retailing for around about £163. However, that is from a European supplier. I couldn't find a supplier for the UK in this. Um, I haven't checked to see if TIS are doing a rebrand of this. They might well be, and consequently giving it a different name. But I think you'll also find that this in itself is actually a rebrand from SEM anyway. So it might be that you can get it from another manufacturer rather than HT Italia or TIS within the UK. So as they say, you get what you pay for, don't you? Um, this instrument is producing better results, but that's coming up quite a significant increase in cost. Um, we all uh, make our decision as to what we want from our instrumentation and consequently uh, make our purchases. Yeah, but I did find it interesting to do the tests on these clamps and see the differences between them. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.